happening? Hello, everyone. This is Bill Griffin. Welcome to Different Take Podcast. If you like this content, please subscribe, like, share, comment. Really appreciate you watching. Today, I want to talk about proposed curriculum at Gwinnett County School Public Schools in Georgia regarding uh, sexual education. So, before I do that, I would like to invite, uh, if you're interested, current or former parents, students, faculty, uh, administrators, the Gwinnett County Public School System. I'd be interested in interviewing you for this podcast. Please reach out to me on Facebook or just uh, comment on the channel if you would be interested, and I'd like to talk to you about it. Maybe we make that work. This is from K-12 Changes in a Curriculum, and I'm going to focus just on three slides from elementary and middle school give you an idea of what is going on. So this is a slide from Health Smart Health Class. Uh, I guess that's the, the curriculum they're considering purchasing, or maybe they use it already. I don't know, or there's a company. But at any rate, this is to explain to the teacher how and what uh, to talk, discuss with the students. Today, we're going to be talking about something called gender roles and gender expression. Show the terms on the slide one at a time and discuss each one. Sex refers to whether a person is labeled as male or female when they're born. Gender roles are ideas or assumptions about how a male or female should behave. These can come from a person's family, culture, friends, and society. Gender identity refers to the way people see themselves in relation to becoming, being male or female or combination, it comes from the person's own inner thoughts and feelings that may or may not match the way others see them. Gender expression is how people express their gender to the outside world. Again, it may or may not match how others think they should be or act. It might be in how they dress or the things they like to do. As you can see from the stories we just read, there isn't just one way to be. Some people may be happy with the gender roles a family or community is sizing them, while others are not. Some people feel comfortable being the gender others see them as, while others may see themselves differently or want to express themselves in their own unique way. Okay, this whole topic of sexual, sexual uh, activity is, um, is personal. It's personal to adults. So why would it be any less personal for a fifth grader? The idea that you're going to introduce this sort of confusion, which would lead to the question, okay, well, what do I do about this? If I'm mislabeled, how do I correct this? So you're introducing this idea that at a young age, mutilating your reproductive organs is a possibility. See this on the next slide directly, but that's what this will lead to. Let's just go through these, what these topics are. Sex, that is not the only definition for the word sex. We talk about uh, gender roles, identity, expression. These are all cultural things. These are cultural things. So uh, this would raise a lot of questions. Why did my parents raise me as a male if I might be a female, for example. And the whole concept of, at the very end, you can see, uh, if you replace the word, some people may be happy with the fill in the blank. It doesn't have to be gender roles. It's kind of inherent that if your parents are teaching you proper values, you're going to treat people with respect, which is what this is all about. But you're introducing this idea. In uh, public education, it seems to me the first rule ought to be to do no harm. If you're going to have, you ought to have a vast, vast agreement, not a 50-50 split, and you're going to force a woke agenda, because that's what this really is, down the throats of parents that say, look, I want to raise my child to treat others as they would wish to be treated, and not to treat others as they wish to be treated, unless, and then fill in the blank, which is what equity, equity, equity means. And of course, this comes up 
a lot. You can see this in interviews uh, with the with high school students across the country. So this is the next slide. Still, fifth graders. Overview. This lesson emphasizes the importance of respecting self-expression in oneself and others. Students read a story about their kids, their age, and discuss whether they think the character is a boy or a girl or unclear and why. They learn terms related to gender roles and expression discuss why it is important to respect the different ways different people may express themselves around gender. After revisiting a story about a child who is bullied due to gender expression, they create a text message campaign to encourage peers to accept and respect diversity. So we're all unique individuals, so we should all, I mean, <laughs> it would be, it's sort of inherent that you're going to instruct students that they're unique individuals through just going to school and it's obviously social uh, <laughs> you learn social skills when you go to school and teamwork and that people are unique you learn that inherently so this really is introducing again idea that you're a, you may not be the sex that you're assigned and that your parents have raised you as. This is really quite confusing and also, again, brings up, well, how do I fix this? How do I fix this? And the idea that, well, the way you can, an option is that you can destroy your, uh, reproductive organs. So the next slide is middle school. So this is for the teacher review. The, uh, these are called health terms. They're not all health terms. Sorry. Review the teaching steps, slides, and teacher pages for any terms or concepts your students may not know and be prepared to explain them as needed. When you look at these, I'm not going to go through all of them, but when you read the words asexual, bisexual, cisgender, gay, uh, heterosexual, homosexual, lesbian, non-binary, pansexual, uh, you get to sexual orientation. And orientation implies, again, that you're born a certain way when there is no scientific evidence that anyone is born with a sexual orientation. These are scientifically, because there is no evidence, these are maybe... You may be born that way, but these may be preferences. So the term sexual preferences isn't here, but they're actually listing things that could be, because there's no scientific evidence, again, that they could be preferences. There are some terms missing, such as sterilization. That's not on here. So when you use the term transgender, you don't use the term sterilization, because that's where that ends up in many, many cases. There are also, in, and this is the thing about public schools or any education, you can't learn everything about, you can't know everything about everything, meaning there are terms here that aren't here should they be discussed, such as pedophilia. Bigamy, and there's a lot of other uh, behaviors or sexual preferences that are considered aberrant or deviant, but they're not covered. Uh, I'll just close up with this on this topic. There are uh, there are a lot of parents that would not want this uh, discussed with their children. They would want they would want to reserve that conversation for themselves, the, the, their children, and the parents. The parents want to reserve that right to uh, raise the children in the way they see fit and to get them the, the help they need, whatever that is, because it's their job to rear the children. And so in the most intimate and personal discussions, you want to parents a lot of parents do not want to cede that to public school systems. 
and teachers that they will only see, uh, most of the time, they'll see in one year. It's not that much time. So this seems to be the woke ideology just continuing to infiltrate the uh, school system to indoctrinate children. It's sort of anti, anti-child. I mean, for example, that's kind of permeated the culture. It's very prevalent in academia. You can see that in the last election where abortion was a lot bigger issue than a lot of people think because people don't they think they don't think about the rights of the unborn child and really think about it from the rights of the birthing person who may get an abortion. So that's my episode today. I just I thought I'd share what a little bit of what's going on. There's a lot more to this, a lot more, of, uh, I think, object, parent, uh, uh, material that parents will find objectable, objectionable. And, and there's a lot more slides that I could point out, uh, particularly as you get, as you get older um, or, or get in, in high school. One thing I wanted to say before I ended up the episode was that uh, in a previous episode, I made the comment that, totally different topic, that the last elections voted by mail is perfectly open for fraud. It's also open to coercion and intimidation by others. And I made the comment that I did not like the, um, I thought it was stupid, I still do, the uh, slogan that, Republicans have come up with called easier to vote, hard and cheap. And I wanted to clarify why I thought that was so, such a dumb idea is because uh, I never thought that it was difficult to vote. So I don't know how you can make it easier. It would be maybe nominally easier. So they, they try to make this as a big deal that it's much, much easier. I never consider it to be difficult to start with. That's my opinion. You may not agree with that. Uh, the harder to cheat, yes, it is. Uh, uh, it, that I don't agree with that either. My original, and for many years, voting experiences was, I thought it was almost impossible to cheat. The, the incentives to cheat were very low, and the penalties were quite high. So that's my, that's my experience. I thought I should clarify that. So, hope you enjoyed the episode and found it interesting. Again, if you're open to interviewing and you're following one of those categories, I mentioned early episode. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. And if you like this content, please, again, subscribe, share, and comment. Thank you.